I mean, it's really hot. Hello and welcome to MidnightSilverCrafters.com. My name's Steve and I'll be your host. This is part two of getting started in lost wax casting and jewelry casting. Okay, now we've already talked about the torch in part number one. Now we got a way to melt our metal. Now we got to have something to put our metal in while we're melting it. Now you see I got right here I got some crucibles. Now if you're going to be using the torch like the one I just showed you this is the way to go right here. For small castings, this is the way to go. This is a potato. It's the best crucible in the world for doing small castings. For like making some ingots, if you're going to make you some uh, wire or some sheet. If you're doing silversmithing, but for casting, for doing lost wax casting and casting jewelry and molds, this is the way to go right here. A potato for a small casting now you can put more than you would think you can put a couple ounces of silver in this potato right here no problem and you can cast it now I highly recommend if you if you're not gonna go with a torch for melting your metal okay and if you have the room to do it or the place to do it I highly recommend going with a propane furnace over the um, electric element type furnace and the reason I say that is those little furnaces for um, you know for for melt for casting jewelry they're about $300. They're electric. They have electric elements in them. Well, there's a couple drawbacks to that. And one is the crucible. All right. Now, those, those furnaces, those little electric furnaces, those use graphite crucibles. Okay. Now, a graphite crucible is not going to last it's not going to last long at all it breaks down really quick even even those little electric furnaces they'll break down those graphite crucibles break down and they do not last they're considered a you know a reusable item a disposable reusable item but now if you can do it if you can run a little small propane furnace like my mixing bowl furnace if you got the place to safely run it, that's the way to go. Because it's first of all, that little my little mixing bowl furnace is going to save you a lot of money in fuel because with electricity you're burning up so much fuel, getting up the temperature. But with, with this propane furnace, it's almost instant heat. And it just, it's the way cheaper in fuel because it don't use much propane. But these are my little crucibles that I run in my mixing bowl furnace right here. Now you see this crucible right here. I've ran that crucible over a hundred pours. And look at it. It's still brand new on the inside almost. I mean... A hundred pours, okay? This thing might last indefinitely. I don't know. It looks like it will. But I put a coating on this that I make up, okay? But uh, I'm going to have another separate video on that coating. So look for that on, on the crucible coating. But I don't want to get off track. But these are called ceramic silica. They're called cast. They're slip casted ceramic silica crucibles and now these are the way to go right here they're they don't you know your crucibles aren't going to burn up on you and if you can run the propane i know it's just different because it's you know you know it's there's flames coming out of it and everything else and it's just but as far as safety i i've never had a problem with mine ever but you just got to be safe, you know, when you're running a furnace, you know, you did, you can't be an idiot, you know, and you got to pay attention 
to what you're doing so you don't catch everything on fire but I'm telling you these you know these little crucibles are the way to go and that little mixing bowl furnace but you know if you absolutely have no other choice you'll have to go with the um, electric furnace and the elements in those don't last that long either that's another problem my mixing bowl furnace over here i'm going to show you that in just a minute that furnace has lasted me three years 100 percent maintenance free but this is what you're going to need okay so i'm just i'm just making suggestions to you now due to your circumstances you may have to get certain things i don't know where you live or where you got you know where you have the work or set up a workspace you can see it's just a mixing bowl with a, a pipe running in it and it runs on air and propane you see my very messy bench because i'm doing a lot of stuff out here plus i'm a, at times i'm a messy person okay all right but anyhow there's the mixing bowl furnace okay now i highly recommend you watch my videos on this mixing bowl furnace okay now here's another item while i'm standing right here now this is my burnout oven this is my homemade burnout oven now watch my videos i got good videos on how to make this homemade burnout oven all right now that's another piece of equipment that you got to have that you can make this burnout oven for about 50 bucks i'm not going to go into all that because i got a whole video on that so watch my video on, on that burnout oven but all right now i'm gonna go back over here all right now we got all that covered now the next thing i'm going to talk about are molds now you see all these molds right here okay now i i made all those molds i bought a few of them there's there's a few of those that i bought but and there's there's all types of rubber i make about six or seven types different types of rubber molds that i make for jewelry for jewelry casting all right now you, you know as far as molds you don't have to learn mold making right away but you can you can watch my videos i got good videos on on making those molds but you're going to need either you're going to either need some molds of your own or you're going to just need just some some wax patterns like these in here these are just these are all wax patterns now if you're just starting out at first you can buy wax patterns i have some wax patterns for sale uh, in fact on, on my website midnightsilvercrafters.com i'm going to be putting up a ton of stuff like this which is just random i got bags and bags and bags of these a lot of them are old a lot of them are good some of them aren't but there's all different patterns that i'm just going to be selling like bags of these patterns and stuff real cheap i'm just going to move them all out because i got so many wax patterns but look on my website you can buy brand new wax patterns there's different things that are available you know there's kits and all kinds of stuff but that, that's the cheapest way to go starting out you can buy a couple wax patterns but you know once you do a couple castings you're going to want to learn how to make these rubber molds okay and you can learn how to make them they're not that hard to make but that's what you do that's how you get these wax patterns all these different wax patterns right here okay just all these different patterns so once you learn how to make these molds right here you can go and you can buy a ring or something and then you can copy it and you can make your own mold and then right up here see i got my wax injector sitting up there now a wax injector is about three or four hundred dollars i think you can get cheap ones for a couple hundred bucks now but you don't have to have a wax injector starting out okay you don't have to have that you can just get some wax 
like this. This is just jewelry wax, okay? See that? That's that's the wax you want to get. This is the best. This is Fire and Frost Fire Flex Blue Jewelry Wax. But just get a bag of wax, and you can just get an old crock pot and a, and a syringe from Walmart, a little metal uh, barbecue syringe from Walmart, and you can shoot molds with that. It does work. You can make a lot of different things with it. It's not, you know, top of the line professional equipment, but it does work. I've made probably thousands of castings with a, a syringe and a crock pot when I first started. That's what I, that's what I did before I had, you know, wax injectors or any of this stuff. But that's what you're going to need now. Okay, you're going to need to to do the casting. You're going to have to get you some investment powder, okay? Now, investment powder, I'll, I'll show you that. It's, it's just like plaster of Paris, but you have to buy jewelry casting investment powder. And then what you do is, you get that? I got videos on every subject, so I'm not going to go in detail, but you get, you get your jewelry casting investment powder, and then you just take a can lid like this. This is just a little metal lid. You put some clay. That's just plain old modeling clay. But you just put that clay on there. Okay, that's your sprue base. Okay. And you make it, you make a sprue base. And then you put your pattern on it just like that. Your wax pattern. Then you come over here and you get your food can. All right, now this is just a plain old food can, nothing, nothing fancy. This is a 16 ounce. You can use any size food can. You can use an 8 ounce, but 16 ounce. But, but this is 16 ounce. You can use any size food can, 8 ounce for a, one little casting like this. But say we're going to make this ring, and you just put your can right over top of it. You put it in this clay and you seat it down on that clay. And then you, this top, both ends of this can are cut out. And then you just pour your investment. Your It's like plaster of Paris. You just pour it right on here. Okay. And that's how you, basically what you, what you got to get. You get some modeling clay. You get some food cans like this. Your wax pattern, you can, if you don't have any wax patterns, you can buy some from me or you can buy them from anywhere you want. They're, they're pretty reasonable. So, and then you get this mold and then you pour your plaster of Paris in that. And then down here, there's a vacuum pump. All right, now to do lost wax casting, you're going to need a vacuum pump. And this is a, this is a stainless steel pot. Okay, that you're that you're gonna need, and and what this pot and this vacuum pump that sucks all of the air. That's a uh, that's a vacuum chamber. There's a round plexiglass lid for it in there, right behind that pump. That's a vacuum chamber, and that sucks all the air out of your uh, investment when you pour it and before you pour it into your. Uh, into your food can, into your mold. So you're making a plaster mold, and then you're going to take that, and then you go and you put it in your uh, burnout oven, like I showed you there, the little homemade burnout oven. Watch, watch my videos on that. And then the only other thing you're going to need is a, is a casting table. Right here's a homemade casting table. All right. Now that's your homemade casting table right there. And you see on the bottom there's a valve, okay? This is real simple and then on the, it has an airline. See right here? It hooks right to that same vacuum pump. You only need one vacuum pump. You go to Harbor Freight and you get you a vacuum pump. Get the two-stage vacuum pump. And you hook it right to this line. Okay, now I got a whole video on how to build this. For about 30 bucks if you want to build one of these. But all you do is you take your can and you set it right on top. Just like that can sitting right there. 
you close that little valve and you turn your vacuum pump on, okay, your Harbor Freight uh, vacuum pump, this one right here, and, and that's all you need to do lost wax casting. That's, that's everything you need to do lost wax casting. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, end it here. But um, I would just uh, like to take a minute to say that um, if you are new and if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I really would uh, appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe to my channel. I, I think you'd learn a whole lot. Uh, I got a lot of great information here that, uh, that uh, you know, that I love to share and stuff. But uh, if you could do me just one great big favor, if you do decide um, that you would like to subscribe to my channel, if you could just go down there in the comments box and just leave me a little short comment. If you could just write in there, I subscribed, that would just be fantastic. And I'd, I'd really appreciate that. And that would help me out a whole lot as far as growing the channel. So, all right. Well, I guess I'm going to just go ahead and uh, end this one here. My name's Steve, and I'll talk to you in the next video.